Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. And in case you're wondering, especially Ann, I know you're wondering, this is not the RV that we were going to purchase. <laughs> this is Chris right here and she, this is hers. This is her class A, it's a 34 footer, right? Um, and she's actually a certified RV tech. And if Chris looks familiar, she was on a video with uh, Rachel from Two Crazy Campers. Campers. Right, so I'll, I'll link that video so you guys can see that video of her um, talking. But if she looks familiar, that's where it's from. And Chris was kind enough to um, talk to us because Hope and I, oops, behind the camera there, we are novices when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to go to the experts, and the expert is right here, Chris. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Not at all. This is going to be fun. I know this is awesome. So what we're thinking is through this video is someone like us right people like us that we don't know what we're doing when it comes to this kind of stuff you know first timers in this and going to an rv tech and we strongly 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 recommending that find an rv a certified rv tech that can help you through your first purchase right and that's why you know we asked chris um when we're going through this uh, purchasing and looking at these rvs process so Chris David gave us a list of some things that you do as a certified RV tech to go out and check these things out and make sure you're getting the bang for your buck, right? Sure. sure. So what's what's give us a couple of things that we're going to be showing you guys as well as we go through her RV. And again, thank you so much for you know mm -hmm. uh, volunteering your RV. Oh sure. This. Yeah. But tell us a couple of things, Chris. What's what's the first thing that some people need to look at when it comes to their first purchase of an RV? Well, right off the bat is the roof. Um, I would definitely have the roof inspected or look at it yourself i mean there's going to be some really obvious things on the roof tires are pretty big if you're if you're purchasing a drivable those are your life okay so make sure the tires are uh, are are in good condition or that you're willing to replace them soon right, right? um and then you're looking for any leaks that have happened other than that the air conditioner should work all the appliances should work and just there shouldn't be any bad smells when you walk in, okay? <laughs> Amen. So, so we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start walking through. Now, we already walked through hers. There, there are no bad smells. It smells actually amazing in there. And she did some <laughs> renovations on it, too, which look amazing in here. So that's where we're going to start off with. So, Chris, you lead the way. All right, let's go. All right, here we are right in front of the RV here. So, Chris, what's the first thing, right? So you, you just pulled up to the place. You know it's not this, you know... What, what, what was the word that you used? Was it a dumpster? A dumpster fire? <laughs> there you go, a dumpster fire, right? She, she told me about one that we're looking at. Just make sure it's not a dumpster fire when they go and see it. So what's the first thing? Other than that, right, when you pull up, you're looking at it, you're like, okay, it looks good from the outside. Right. What do you look at first? Well, on the outside, um, you want to look for delamination. That's when the material that holds the RV together from the outside is not pulling away from the stuff that's on the inside, right? It looks what it looks like and you can actually go up and touch it and feel it um, is just bubbles along the side and a lot of people will be like oh that might be water damage or whatever no it's, it's just an air gap now and that's it's still a no player you, you don't want a delaminating um, RV it's it's not good it's just gonna get worse so the other things I would look at right off the bat are tires uh, drivable or pull behind always look at your tires there's if you're driving a motorhome, that's your life that you're driving on. So you want good quality tires. You're going to look at the the DOT uh, label on that, and you're going to check the code. Here's the DOT code right here. You look that up. Uh, just Google it. Find out when those tires were manufactured. You're also, of course, looking at your your normal wear and tear, um, even wear. Um, the tread depth you want to make sure you know you can get Lincoln's head in there and all that But if the RV tires are more than five years old and it was stored in some place like Florida You're gonna to want to replace them pretty quickly because you'll look closer You won't see it on these because they're relatively new, but you look close. You'll see dry rot You'll see cracking that are that's going around the wheel and that's just Well, it's an accident waiting to happen and if it happens on your steer tires and you're driving a, a mobile home That could be your life so it's not something to mess with. The on, on a towable, a lot of people don't carry spares because there's no place to put them. So I know there are a lot of RVers out there who do towables and they just bought a spare because 
it will happen. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Also, TPMS. It's just um, that's not something you necessarily need to look for when you're buying one, but look for later on when you're using it because okay. you want to know when something that bad is about to happen. And that's not a bad idea if you're wondering about those tires. If you're just like, you know, I can eke by on a couple more months, get that TPMS and hopefully it'll like kind of alert you if something bad is going to happen. And that's an electronic system that you can put in there and it attaches to the tires. Is that what you're talking about? Right. Yeah. yeah. I've got them on my car because my car gets towed behind my RV. Yeah. And so I can't tell if my car is having a blowout. So I have a TPMS attached to that. And then I have a little monitor that's Bluetooth. Okay. And it just, it's, it's completely wireless and it lets me know if anything is going awry with my car. Gotcha. And the same thing cool. can be done with your RV and it doesn't have to be something that's wired to your RV. Okay. It can just, it can be solar powered and, and just set up on your dash. Awesome. Now here, here's the novice question, right? So is that the reason why you see it a lot of in the RV facilities and things like that where, where they, or even at a home, where they have a cover over the tires? Well, and the cover of the tires is a highly debatable thing. So comment in the comment section if you have an opinion. But in Florida, covering the tires could also cook the tires. So maybe you just protect them, maybe you leave them in some shade, but when you put something that encases the tire and then your sun beats on it, it could just cook it. Whereas maybe you just keep them clean and you keep the rubber not so dry right, right. Um, and and use it take it out and use it because you'll develop flat spots on your RV if you don't you know on the tires if you don't use it but when you roll it down the road those flat spots even out so as far as covering those that's that's something I don't do it um, but I'm pretty cheap when it comes to stuff like that so <laughs> maybe it's just the expense that I haven't gotten around to so yeah so guys comment and let us know what do you think of the covers it sounds like it's a debate never heard that before yeah. but it sounds like it's a debate so hey let us know what you think is it is it is it realistic is it something that's actually usable because remember for us as being brand new to this stuff there's some things that we're gonna have to purchase so is that something that we can deal with that we don't need right so all right Chris what's next yeah, on the tires, I would say not right away. Right now, right away. There you go, Let guys. It, so it's not on our go. list. Okay. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> but that, that TPMS? TPMS, I would totally do. That, that for sure is going to be on our list, so we need to add that on there. Definitely. So what do you got next? All right, so right now, um, I've got my awning partially out because it's a little windy today. Mm -hmm. So here's a, just something, if you didn't get a chance to watch uh, the video with Rachel and I, you'll never leave your RV with the awning out because you could come back and the awning could be mangled because this thing comes out a lot further and it is basically a sail. So you don't want the awning to rip off of your RV, not only damaging the awning itself, ruining it really, um, but it could also cause a lot of damage to your RV. Um, when you're looking for purchasing one, you can consider that these do need to be replaced occasionally and you're gonna ask the seller, you know, how old is the awning? Is it original, right? Different awning companies make different materials. And so run it out, run it back in, and while you're at it, find out how it works, right? So I know where mine is, I know where the controls are. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it out and we'll look at some stuff. I know there's some parts on mine that I'm, I'm gonna show you because I haven't replaced it yet. that they're not bent, very straight, hug up against the RV really well. And if you come over here, Hope, oh. I'll show you the other thing that, that kind of bugs me about mine. Uh -huh. And it's right on this side. It doesn't quite go in right there. It's been, it's been pulled away and it oh, needs yeah. to be sewn back. Oh. And um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> so anyway, that's something to look for because that could eventually tear away. Now, the other thing is uh, mold and mildew. All right, okay. there's a real easy way to take care of mold and mildew on your awning, depending what kind of awning fabric you have. This, I don't, I haven't done anything with, but on my other one, I used um, a, basically the equivalent of a green scrubby on a stick. And huh. I, I just used Dawn dishwashing liquid. That is the mildest detergent you can use. And I just 
I just gently rub the, the awning to clean it and then just hose it down with some water. Who cares if it rains on you? It's Dawn dishwashing liquid. It's not yeah. a chemical. Right. And that's, to me, that's important for not just, you know, me and my awning, but the environment too. Right? And Chris, right. you mentioned in the, earlier, now this one was electric, came out. Yep. Like that. But you mentioned that the older RVs, it might be a crank system. A right? manual, yeah. A sort of manual. So what, what if, it's, if it is that, what is something that they need to be looking for if it is a manual crank? Make sure it's got all its parts. Okay. And like the handle that you have to use to pull it out okay. because otherwise you're not going to reach it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So make sure it's demonstrated. Okay. I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. Awesome. All right. What's next? Steps. All right. Oh. So for me, um, my steps are electric and we could crawl underneath there and look at all the stuff underneath, but as long as it operates well, so I'm going to turn it off so that it, it retracts. And you just want to make sure that it goes in and out smoothly. It doesn't make all kinds of awful noise. It doesn't hang up. And and then it automatically withdraws when you turn the engine on. Okay. 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 That's supposed to happen no matter what. So or you can also make them so that, so that they stay out, which I'm going to do now. There's a button that I, that I press that does it automatically for me. Now, on yours... I believe there is no stair. I believe that you will, in a Class C, just step up into it. Um, for for folks who are older and um, need a little extra step, they, you know, those little kitty things where they're learning how to go potty. Yeah. You know, those little steps. Yep. Mm -hmm. Take one of those, and they're perfect. And they even there is even some that folds up, so you can just stick it right over here behind your chair or whatever. But that way you have a um, safer access. You're not trying to make huge leaps. But anyway, so steps. Also, when, when you're purchasing an RV, you wanna know where the chassis batteries are. A lot of times they'll be in a bay and sometimes they'll be under the step. Okay. Mine, mine are under here. Um, you wanna know what kind of batteries, you want to know how old they are. There's different types of batteries for different uses, all right? So of course, you've got your lithium batteries. Those lithium batteries are like $800 a piece. Fantastic batteries. The thing about lithium, you can run them dry. Okay. Most batteries you can't do that to. Next up is um, AGM. So there's the gel batteries. There's golf cart batteries. Those are my favorite. There's marine batteries. A lot of times they're interchangeable, golf cart and marine batteries. They're, they're um, deep cycle. So you can use them pretty close to low voltage okay. but once a battery gets to a certain point it's technically no good anymore even though you might be able to charge it and get a little use out of it uh, once it hits i want to say 11 and a half volts dc it's done okay um your cell has been damaged and it while it may hold a charge you won't hold it for very long or for very well and you may, you may not get the best dc output for the batteries if you plan to store your rv and not live in it make sure you disconnect your batteries or else they will die. And then you have to fork out another $80 times two or whatever how much batteries cost at the point at that point to get your RV back up and running again. Same thing with your engine battery. If you don't have some type of solar charger on it, trickle charger, then make sure you disconnect it if you put it in storage. Great tip. So anyway, I have two um, 12 volt or six volt batteries that are um, in my RV, a lot of them will come with two 12 volt batteries. It just depends. But your DC is run on 12 volts and you'll want to check the DC side. And how you do that is you turn on some DC stuff. Lights or DC. Um, uh, if it has a radio internal to it, that's DC. A fan will also be DC. Okay. So that's pretty much that's pretty much all of your, your DC components. Now, looking for AC, alternating current, I would recommend grabbing one of these guys right here. They're super cheap and they're great to use at home also. Okay. You can just take them to every outlet in your house, every outlet in your RV to make sure it's correctly grounded. And this has a light pattern that lets you know when it's 
grounded correctly or when it's wired correctly. Okay. And you just plug this in. You can go around to every AC socket if you want. I would partic uh, pay particular attention to bathrooms and the kitchen area, anywhere where there's water. Because sometimes your um, GCFI or GFCI, yeah, <laughs> that thing will trip. And, and, and you can also force it to trip to make sure it can be reset. It's working, okay. So okay. those are things to look for there. This is not expensive. I'm sure you can put a link down below. Yep, I will put a link <laughs> down below for that. All right, so we'll, we'll go inside next. Okay. All right, so now we're inside, of course, so Chris, we're, we're, we're talking about the ACDC, how you're going to be checking it with this cool little gadget right here. Yep. So what are you doing? So you've got this with you. Right. What are you checking? So here in my kitchen, I do have AC connected to the, to the RV right now because I like to keep my RV dehumidified. And so I don't know if you want to come to this side so you can read it, yeah. but these two lights are on and this light is off. And, and you can see down here it says correctly wired. Nice. And that's what you're looking for. Okay. Um, I'm not going to reset the trip right now because it's a it's a bit of a pain to go back through. But as you can see, we've got um, lights. This is how you're going to check your your DC is you're going to turn on the lights. And if they start dimming, obviously I'm hooked up to power right now. But if you're running on battery and they start dimming, then that's a sign that your DC power is probably your batteries may not be charged, or there could be a problem with wiring, especially if they start flickering a little bit. Okay, so um, that covers AC, that covers DC. What else do we have? Okay, slide outs. So I know you guys aren't necessarily looking at it slide out, but if you do have a slide, you want to run it in and out. I'm not going to do that here because we'll run out of room really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so if you do get a slide, you want to run it in and out. You want to be told how to do it because some RVs will say, all right, I need your engine running in order to put that slide out. It needs the, maybe the extra amperage. Or, so this, that's my current RV. I have to have the engine running to put the slides out. Oh, and the brake set as well. Hmm. Um, on my first RV, you could not have the engine running and you still had to have the brake set. So it ran off a of battery draw, uh, drawing the slides in for my class C. And for my class A, I need to have the engine running. So. It's going to be one of those things you're going to want to ask your, your seller, your dealer, or whoever you're buying your RV from, show me how to do that. And you know what, too? Don't be scared to ask for um, a demonstration that you record, okay? Because you're not going to remember. You're going to be so excited about buying a new RV that you're going to be like, what did they say? How do you flush the toilet? Yeah. Okay. So That's actually a really, really good idea. Yes. Yeah, that's Great something that we'll, we'll do that for sure. Right, and, and of course you'll ask for permission. You know, is it okay if I record you? But most people are fine with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Maybe they might not be fine putting them on YouTube. But. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, hey. If, but at least they're a reference. Tour, they might want the business. Never know. Right? Yeah, that's exactly true. right. That's exactly true. right. <laughs> so in the plumbing, well, I don't know if we can fit in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> So for plumbing, we're going to make sure that the water is turned on. Not everybody's going to have a water switch in their bathroom, but you want to make sure your water pump is turned on. And then all toilets are going to be different, but you want to make sure that the, the toilet can be filled. All right. And I'm going to, I have a vacuum flush. Um, if you hear of the words vacuum flush in your RV search, run the other way. Oh, okay. They're awful. Don't okay. do it. It's, it's, um, it was designed for a boat. I would never, ever, ever do it again. I know how to operate it this time because I went to school. I know how to fix it. I know mm -hmm. how to change the pump and the bellows and all that. I would not recommend that to anybody. You can hear it pumping. <laughs> yeah, you hear it. Yep. Imagine that someone goes to the bathroom in the middle of the night. The pump's underneath my bed. Yeah. How fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, flushing the toilet, you just want to make sure that, that it completely evacuates and huh. and that there's no leaks now if we go outside where the black tank is. Um, you're not going to be able to test the valves on the black tank very easily mm. when you're buying an RV, but you can look for telltale signs. Um, and we'll go outside, we'll look at that. 
You're going to see it all here, folks, a toilet <laughs> in our video. We just showed you how to flush a toilet. Hey, that's important. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, but... Now, Chris, one of, one of the things you mentioned to me um, about the refrigerator, when you're checking the RV tech, letting them know, make sure the refrigerator's on the, maybe the right. night before, before they get there. Yeah. So um, if, you're, if you're buying from a private seller, uh, it's a really good idea to check the refrigerator after it's been running for a while. Honestly, in most RVs, they're absorption refrigerators, so they don't cool quickly. They cool wonderfully, but not quickly. Mm. So um, you, wanna, you wanna ask them if they don't mind to go ahead and turn on the refrigerator in advance. And that way you could use a thermometer like this. I don't think I've, bat I've got a battery in here right now, but when I'm going down the road, this is just a little thermometer that can hang inside the on the wires and it tells me exactly how cold it is in there. Oh, so you can wow. just take one of these with you, plop it in the fridge when you first get there on site, and then if you have two, which you know I do, you just put them one in one and one in the other. Refrigerator should be 36 to 40, and then your freezer obviously should be freezing, right? right. Zero yeah. is probably best, but RV refrigerators. A lot of people say you can never get ice cream to completely freeze in an RV refrigerator. Mine freezes just fine, um, but there are there are cases that you know your ice cream is going to be super soft. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, it may or may not be the highest freezing temperature that you or right. lowest <laughs> freezing temperature that you can get. Right. And then what are you looking for? And then, like for us, you know, we're not probably going to, we're probably going to use the oven for, uh, for storage. Because, <laughs> um, you know, we've got the air fryer, we've got the, the Blackstone, right we're going to be cooking outside most of the time. And then, you know, hopefully we'll have a convection oven. So, but if someone is planning on using this, what's something that they can look for? Well, as an RV tech, I have a thermometer that I can check the temperature if I turn the oven on and then I set it to a certain temperature, I wanna make sure that it can get to that temperature. Um, uh, let me see, I'm not gonna turn the oven on right now, I think I have my gas on, but anyway, you wanna make sure that it lights and that the entire flame um, lights up and that you know how to light the pilot light if it goes out. Um, you know, I'm gonna bring the RV in. <laughs> the, uh, the, I'm sorry, I'm bringing the awning in. I yeah, can feel it. Windy. Do you feel it? Oh, it's yeah. the entire RV. So don't go to bed with your um, awning out either. Because like I said, it is a sale. And I'll leave it like that. So you can leave it out just a little bit mm -hmm. because it's so taut by that time. It's it's not going to it's not gonna be too bad. I wouldn't leave it out overnight or away though, ever. Okay. You know, you walk out your RV, shut the awning. Okay. Back to what I was saying. <laughs> Oven. You can um, use one of those guns where you shoot the laser in there mm. and see what the temperature is okay that's one way to do it um that because that will also work for your our your air conditioner um microwave you can just turn it on see if it works but again don't forget you have to have ac if you're at a dealership and they don't have power run then you're gonna have to turn on our generator if you're buying a, a tow behind it may or may not have a generator so now you're what are you gonna do you're gonna take it on somebody's word that it, that the electronic or electric devices work no, you absolutely definitely want to plug it in, no matter what. Um, what else do we have? Now, in the interior, so another thing that was mentioned was looking for leaks inside. Right. So what are you looking for in here? I'm definitely, I'm sure, in the bathroom you're looking for leaks and things, but what are you looking for in here for the structure and leaks? Okay, so um, one of the hurricanes, when my slide was in, I actually got wind-driven water in my slide. And this area up here, this has been replaced. But the reason I replaced it was because it was soft. The wood was literally soft. I could push on it. And you know what rotten wood yeah. feels like, right? Especially rotten cheap wood. <laughs> so it would be beneficial to just go around and touch some things, touch the roof. If the, if the ceiling doesn't look right, right? Especially around your air conditioners, especially mm -hmm. around any holes in the ceiling. That's huge. When, when you have a box with a roof, it's pretty much leak tight. But once you start putting holes in it, it's no longer leak tight. So you want to go around to every protrusion that came through your roof and look for any type of water entry. The, um, the smell, 
remember I was talking about mm -hmm. the smell? That's also something that you want to pay attention to when you walk in. If it smells like a litter box or mm -hmm. like, um, well, just mildewy. Mildewy, mildewy yeah. is a really good word. Yeah, like a an old tent. <laughs> Remember the oh, yeah, um, those old canvas tents? And I don't know if yeah. anybody ever uses those. Or, yeah, but, or, or locker. Or right? Locker. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but the the smell is a huge indicator. And so when you when you walk into an RV and you know you're overwhelmed by oh yes I want this we could do this here we could do this here don't forget to look. So for class C's, all right, the thing that you look for is the overhead, the over cab area. Um, you have to get up there. That is the number one place for leaks, unless it's a con entire self-contained unit, like uh, I think Jayco makes like an entire self-contained that it's part of the, the structure itself, so it can't leak unless they got a hole in it. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll pretend like this is a Class C, okay. mm -hmm. and you would look up at the top, you know, and then, but unfortunately water wouldn't stay up top, because that's where the seal is. Nobody's gonna run downhill. So follow the path of gravity. So the, the path of least resistance for water is going to be underneath. So you can really tell a lot from outside the RV. You go up to the front of the cab and from outside, um, you're facing the windshield and you can just see that where that comes down and around and you just press on the fiberglass and see, does it give a lot? Mm -hmm. Can I push up on this thing, right? That's not a good sign. Right. I, at the dealership one time, I literally saw uh, RV duct taped oh. seams. Oh boy, duct taped, and and it was all around this, <laughs> all around. They didn't have flex seal, I guess, <laughs> because that's what you know. If you're going to use tape, might as well be use flex seal, seal right? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so that's um, important for for everything for all the places, even the windows. Okay, you can even look underneath windows to see. You know, is this? Can I push here and it flex? Okay. Right. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, you can look for where the where the sealant maybe is not there when you're looking at the outside. Um, there, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, there's see there's a little bit of weather stripping here that you can see that it squishes and it's supposed to do that um, between this side. So the the way that these windows are installed, well, at least in mine, not in all of them. Some of them are different. Um, it's got two sides to the window and it comes together and it screws on both sides and there's weather stripping around Well, there's there's a sealant on the outside and then there's this weather stripping on the inside that that provides that seal For the window to stay in the RV, but also to keep water out So you're, you're looking at those for telltale signs if, if you see some drips down the water Maybe that's not just from coffee, right. <laughs> you yeah. know um, Outside too. You can look on the outside although that's not going to indicate a leak. It's just going to uh, drip pattern right but good to know mm -hmm. that's really good to know and then um what else in the interior so i'm sure is there anything in the front that they need to be looking for you know as far as um you know any of the equipment so or anything like that dash, yes right mm -hmm. you would look uh as far as a drivable rv you're going to make sure your safety features your safety equipment is there um seat belts right and and right now my seats aren't connected so you know don't look there mm -hmm. but you're gonna make sure that it, you've got smooth shifting transition uh, transmission. You you basically want, as if you were inspecting a new or used vehicle, you're gonna look for any problems. Like, does it is it sluggish on the turnover? Um, is there does the horn work? Is it you know what are the different features of the RV and do they all work? For example, my RV has cameras on the side view mirrors. Okay, cool. When you turn your turn signal on. The screen lights up and says, "Hey, you, you know, here's here's your side, <laughs> right?" But um, make sure it works. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, maybe that's a bargaining tool. Okay, that's actually good. Yeah. And then what about? So this is getting super detailed, right? Okay. Getting into the engine and things like mm -hmm. that. When someone walks in as an RV tech, what are you looking for in that? And if someone's saying, "Hey, I want to know top to bottom what that RV is going to, you know, is it going to be?" Is it going to run when I leave? Right, right. What are you looking for in the engine? So, I am not a mechanic. <laughs> My RV tech school taught me the house. The engine is for a mechanic, okay? I did not get any training on the engines. My engine maintenance is just what I know. I'm going to look at the oil. I'm going to look and see if there's any sha metal shavings in the oil, transmission fluid, same thing, steering, power steering, all those different areas that, as a, as a car driver, which most of us are, right. or 
you know, whatever we drive, vehicle. Um, we're going to look at those things, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. And if you want, though, you could always hire a mechanic to look at it, right? Right. You could drive it and ask the, obviously, you're going to ask the owner, hey, can I take this to my mechanic? Can they look it over and, and check it out for me? Awesome. So, but even then, a mechanic can't tell if your transmission is getting ready to go unless mm -hmm. there's some really obvious signs. Yeah. Right. I mean, you could have the smoothest shifting transmission in the world and then... Hundred miles down the road, it goes out. Yeah. So that would, you know, be a bummer. Yes, it would. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a real bummer. And then one more thing, and mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll have to go outside to look at this: the generator. So, mm -hmm. what are you listening for when you're inside, right? And then we'll go outside here and take a look at it in a minute. But if you're inside, you 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 know the generator's running, whatever from the inside. What are you listening for? Uh, good question. So for a generator. You don't want it to skip a lot. You don't. You want it to be smooth running. Um, you want it to not flicker your lights, your equipment. Uh, you, you don't want power surges. So before you transfer power to your generator, um, you want to make sure that your generator has been running for a few minutes. Okay, and my RV does that for me. So I can start the generator up from inside, and then the power sensing senses oh wait the generator is on and it has priority so it's going to switch over to the generator over um, incoming ac okay and after a few minutes after it's checked the conditioning of the power and make sure it's good power uh, then it'll switch over and you can hear a, a very noticeable thunk that the generator is running and then you will really just know the generator is running because most of them are quite loud now, if you get a vehicle, so camper, uh, pull behinds, right? Tow behinds typically aren't gonna have a generator. You're probably gonna have to buy one, but that's okay. They make some really good small ones that are super quiet. You can even get two. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as long as you can plug some stuff in, that's what you're looking yeah, for, right? Yeah. And um, then it's just up to you to take them somewhere to get gas in them. And, and oh, here's a very important point. So for motorhomes that have generators. If your fuel tank goes down below a quarter tank, your generator may shut off. In likelihood, it will shut off. Mm. It may even be just a little above quarter tank, right? Because it's a float, right? The fuel tank has a float. It's not that specific. Mm -hmm. If you're on a hill, it may float one way or the other more, right? It's like, wait, I got a, you know, a little over a quarter tank. I should be good on the generator. Well, maybe not. It just will not start. Okay. And a lot of people think, oh, my generator's broke. No, you just have only a quarter tank. And the reason they do that is so that if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you need to get back to a fuel station. Right. You don't want to soak up all your fuel and now you're stranded. Yeah. So they want to give you a quarter tank to get to where you need to go. Okay. So one, a couple last things inside and we'll go check out the generator on the outside. So I'm looking for it now. I might be, so you got a smoke detector here. Yep. How many do you recommend inside? And then also a carbon, carbon monoxide, right? So right. What, what else would you recommend to have inside? And then also you mentioned a dehumidifier, right? Well, the dehumidifier is because we live in Florida. Right. And, and, and I don't necessarily have mine under air all the time, but we have humidity year round. Yeah. So I have a humidifier. I leave my RV plugged in to 110 and I have the humidifier. It's just draining right into the gray tank. I don't think I'm going to have that much humidity that my gray tank will overflow, but I come out here often enough that I'm going to, I'm going to check it. Yeah. So, um, a humidifier is completely optional. The other things usually come standard. Okay. So everything in here came standard. I have two smoke detectors because I have two sections because that is a room and you mm -hmm. can shut it off. Mm -hmm. So anytime you have a dividing point, then you need another smoke detector. Right. Okay. okay. Um, but like I said, that one was, here when I bought the RV. Same thing for this one here. That's a smoke detector. And you know you don't want to put it too close to the kitchen. I've actually mm -hmm. unplugged that one. You know, I took the battery out because um, the battery was dying. And uh, I'm not cooking in here right now. Right. So, but they're super easy to check, right? You know, so I can just pull this one off, I think. Right? And then I just put the battery right back up in there and close it. And the other one is back here on the, on the bed. It's just a normal first alert. Okay. That is, it has a, a holder on the wall. And, and so if you didn't have one in your RV, you could always buy one and install okay. it. So then on the carbon monoxide detector, 
these come standard and they almost all of them look like this. All right. They have about a five year battery on them before they start beeping incessantly. And they're not hard to change. You just buy a new one. You can go online, search your, your um, make and model and purchase it. You unscrew the two screws there. You pull it out carefully, disconnect the wiring, connect it back up, put it back together. Super easy to fix. You don't need to call a technician for that. Okay. You can do it yourself. Um, but if it happens to be going off, it's not make or break on the RV. Um, it just means that it's been five years. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And those are always on. Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's go check out the generator. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to check out the propane tank. So what are we looking for here, Chris? So on the propane, when you turn it on, you're going to make sure that the, the gauge works. That will be super helpful. And when you turn it on, um, that the gas appliances do light. And the easiest gas appliance to check, of course, is the stove. So you want to turn on the gas on the stove. If you don't, since you're not an RV tech, right? You're going to turn the gas on the stove and turn on all the burners. Of course, make sure there's nothing, you know, on the, yeah. or on, the yeah. on the stove or above it that's going to catch on fire. But you, what you're looking for is to make sure that there's no leaks in the system. So if that system is struggling to maintain four burners on at the same time, then there may be a problem. Okay. So if they're like Tip. coughing and flickering and sputtering and things like that, well, I don't know if a flame can cough, but if it did, you'd know what it looks like. You know yeah. what it sounds like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Controversy, right? Is the screen covers on some of this stuff? Because yeah. I, I've seen some videos, some people that do have RVs, well, they'll put these on there and it looks like you already have. Yeah, I didn't. The bugs and all that stuff. I didn't do that. Right? It was on when I got it. Yeah. Yeah, so I was told that in class that it's not recommended because it's restricting the air. But to be honest, when I live, I live in Florida and dirt daubers get everywhere and they will invade your water heater. What are dirt daubers? And, you know what a dirt dauber is? No. Okay. I've never heard so that. So they, they build these nests. <laughs> that, it's a that, bird? No, it's a oh. wasp. Oh, okay. It's kind of like a wasp. Oh, we don't want that, those. No. That are like, they're also called mud daubers. They, they use mud and dirt to build the nests that they make. Uh -huh. Probably gotcha. could find some. Uh, I've got really good pest control. They keep them down. So, uh -huh. um, anyway, so here's the RV vent. You're gonna want to make sure that uh, if if you're gonna buy one, that you can remove the panel. I'm not gonna remove mine because I've got a very finicky uh, mm -hmm. switch here. So um, here's the the uh, furnace. That's the water heater. Wait, that's the, I'm sorry. That's the furnace. This is the water heater. I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually take these things off. Okay. And you can look at it. So I have a 10 gallon water heater and it's operated by gas and electric. The, um, that's a huge thing too. You want to make sure your water heater works, right? Yeah. I mean, cold showers are great in Florida, but when you when you start heading north, cold showers aren't That's fun a anymore. Story. Yeah. Right. So anyway, you want to make sure that there's not too much going on with the corrosion. I mean, I've got a bit of corrosion here, but I do live in Florida, so I I, I know what I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, just want to look at it for anything obvious. This is a circuit card. You want to make sure your circuit card doesn't have any ruptures. Or anything like that. Okay. And that there's nothing that looks out of the ordinary, right? So the the two compartments that are not locked on the RV, the propane tank and the generator. And the reason being is that if there's a fire, the fire needs to get put out, right? Yeah. So my generator um, is. 5500. It's an owner 5500. And here's what this is not me, but. Um, it was serviced at 124 hours on this date and it was lube oiled and filter change. So I think it's a really good idea. I started doing this now on all the things that I replaced is I put a piece of tape on it when I did it. Um, same thing idea. with the battery. Mm -hmm. um, if you change out batteries, if you service the batteries. So some of the batteries may need distilled water added to them. Go ahead and put a, a note when you did it. Yeah. Last time you did so it. then you can check it. That's a great idea. All right. So... Now that we've seen the, <laughs> I don't take those off very often. 
All right. So why I struggle with it so much, it's got these pens in here, mm -hmm. okay? And then they, they jam into there. You don't want this thing to just come off, so yeah. it yeah. is in there very tight. Um, you can start the generator typically one of two ways. You can start it from the outside um, with the service breakers on, and then you um, typically have to prime it by pressing and holding the opposite of the start mm -hmm. switch for about 10 seconds is what I do. I do one Mississippi and then press and hold start until it turns on. Now, if you just shut it off and you got to turn it back on, there's no need to prime it. But um, if you haven't started in a while, then definitely prime it. Here's where you check your oil and you can do the same thing you would for a car. Check the oil to make sure it doesn't have any shavings in it. Um, but yeah, cool generator. You want to make sure that it works. You want to make sure that it does start if, you, if your RV comes with one. Okay. Awesome, Chris. So I got one last question for you. So you know how it is up north and, and down south. So you've got the salt up there with the roads and things like that for the snow. What is something that you would look for, you know, if you can see for rusting and things like that underneath the, the vehicle? Well, first of all, you definitely got to look. You got to crawl under there. When you go to inspect your RV, take a cardboard box that you've broken down so that you can lay down on the ground, scoot underneath it, or bring a creeper if you want, and just and, and go underneath the RV and look under there to see what kind of corrosion has occurred. And if you're seeing brackets that are corroded out and tanks that are kind of getting ready to fall on your head, then it's probably, you know, a pass on that one. <laughs> but just make sure that you take a look underneath. Don't just take anyone's word for it. No, it's never been in the snow. Or no, I've never parked on the beach overnight and got water in my RV, right? So don't do do the your due diligence and make sure that that everything is kosher, right? Awesome, awesome, Chris, you are amazing. And guys, one thing I didn't mention that I want to mention now is Chris is retired Air Force, and so thank you so much Woo! for your service. Yes. We really appreciate it. And I'm going to have her contact information, just her email. Yeah. Is that okay? Something. I'm going to have her email down below. If you guys have any questions, maybe something that we didn't get the chance to cover today and you want to ask Chris, she, I'm telling you, she's a superstar. She's going to answer that question for you guys. And comment below. Let us know what you guys think. Of course, the controversy on the on the tire covers, stuff, on yeah. the tire covers. We'd like to know that. And then also the, the little cage thing on the, the, screens, on yeah. the screens. Yeah, let us know about that. So again, guys, do us a favor, like, share, subscribe. We want to thank you all for being with us today. Chris, again, thank you so much for being with us. Hope, thanks yes. for videotaping, and we'll see y'all soon. Take care. Bye.